Number 10. Muisca Mummy The Muisca mummies are a group of horrifying human remains left behind by the ancient ruling class of the Muisca people. The Muisca lived in the Colombian Andes before the arrival of the Spanish and were an advanced civilization that mummified the higher social class members of their society. The discovery of these terrifying mummies goes all the way back to the early 1600s, when the Spanish invaders began plundering in what is now modern-day Colombia. In 1602, the Spanish found a group of over 150 of these mummies situated in a dark cave. The mummies were seated in a great circle, with the chief mummy in the center. They were all dressed in clothing and decorated in jewels. The Spanish had no idea what to think. They didn't seem to spend much time pondering, however, and simply pillaged the jewels and got the heck out of there. Since then, far more Muisca mummies have been discovered. Even just recently, archaeologists found the mummified body of a baby in a cave, left there in the open with a pacifier, cotton cloth, and a small bowl. The mummies that belonged to the higher classes were usually decorated with gold earrings and nose rings, and even gold crowns encrusted with emeralds. But the mummification process was a little different for the indigenous Muisca. They didn't actually bury their mummies. They always left them just kind of sitting in caves or inside mausoleums. They would then surround the mummies with things that could help them in the afterlife. Some people were entombed with their wives, some with their slaves, and almost always with large pots of food so that they could eat during their journey to the underworld. Number 9. The Other Colosseum Archaeologists in Turkey have uncovered a Roman arena almost identical to the legendary Colosseum in the city of Rome. According to the researchers, this Colosseum would have hosted gladiator fights for up to 20,000 spectators. This incredible discovery came as a national first. It was thanks to excavations in the ancient city of Mastaura, where the arena was found buried under a literal mountain of vegetation. While it is definitely similar to the Colosseum we all know and love, it does have some noticeable differences. It's actually quite a bit smaller, almost like a miniature version of the Colosseum. The one in Rome, which began its construction in 70 AD, was able to hold a maximum of 80,000 people. That makes it about four times larger than the one in Turkey. Still, survey leader Sedat Akurnaz of Adnan Menderes University has called the discovery one of a kind. He says there are no other amphitheaters like this anywhere in the Anatolia region or the surrounding area. No one found it for so long because it was literally invisible underneath the shrubs and wild trees, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Archaeologists now believe that people from neighboring cities would have come to this place to watch bloody gladiator fights and battles between wild animals. The building itself dates back to 200 AD, to the Severan dynasty of the Roman Empire. Number 8. Mysterious Mayan Pyramid A new study has revealed that a mysterious Mayan pyramid in the country of El Salvador was constructed from rocks spit out of a volcano. And apparently, the enormous structure, called the Campana structure or the bell, was actually intended to honor the very volcano that its building supplies came from. We have to go back 1,500 years to explain this discovery, to a time when Mayan builders crafted the giant pyramid out of volcanic rock. This was around the year 539 AD, in what is now San Andres. The volcano known as the Ilopango Caldera erupted in what scientists understand to be the biggest volcanic event in the last 10,000 years anywhere in Central America. The erupting volcano produced lava flows that went on for miles, belching so much ash into the atmosphere that it actually caused the climate in the northern hemisphere to cool. But here's the deal with the Maya. Instead of being terrified by this awesome natural event, they witnessed the destructive power of the volcano and were in awe of it. According to researchers from the Department of Anthropology at the University of Colorado Boulder, the locals abandoned their settlements because of the destruction. But then, they went back. And when they did, they built this enormous pyramid as a monument to the very volcano that scared them away just a century earlier. They even used volcanic rock to help build the walls of the pyramid, showing just how much they respected nature's brutality. Number 7. The Strangest Armor The Kiribati armor has to be the strangest type of traditional armor found anywhere in the world. This type of armor comes from the independent Republic of Kiribati, located in the central Pacific Ocean. 
From what archaeologists understand, the islands here were occupied by humans around the year 3000 BC, with the Kiribati culture likely arising around the year 1300 AD. These were seafaring people, well known for building outrigger-style canoes that could sail the seas. They also lived inside large buildings called maneaba, which they used kind of like huge town centers where many people could live under one roof. Since these people were islanders, they used whatever resources were available to them. The different types of vegetation found on their islands were used for food and to make timber for their canoes and houses. They even used coconut fibers to make string and ropes and for weaving their fighting armor. Their suits of armor were crafted from thickly woven coconut string called tekora, as well as the dried spines of blowfish to create spiky helmets. The armor was only used in ritualistic combat between two men. It wasn't combat to the death, but rather combat simply to injure. When two men fought using their Kiribati armor, they also used broadswords made from shark teeth. They would then hit one another with their broadswords until one gave up. Unfortunately, many of these traditional pieces of armor were destroyed after 1892, when the islands came under the protectorate of the British Empire. Very few are still remaining today. Number 6. The Sword of Gujian The Sword of Gujian is one of the most legendary weapons ever found. It was discovered in 1965 by an archaeological team searching for ancient tombs along the Zhang River Reservoir in the Jingzhou region of China. The archaeologists found over 2,000 artifacts, though none of them were nearly as impressive as the sword. This sword was found next to a human skeleton inside of a coffin that had been badly damaged from flooding. The whole tomb was soaked and had been for thousands of years. So when the team pulled the sword from its wooden scabbard, they were understandably surprised to find it in just about perfect condition. Archaeologists say the scabbard was so well built, so completely airtight, that it protected the ancient sword from thousands of years of water damage. The blade was completely untarnished and still has a razor-sharp edge. The Hubei Department of Culture described the sword as being able to easily cut through at least 20 pieces of hard paper, though it's unclear what exactly that means. Maybe someone tested it out on a stack of newspapers? The sword comes from the spring and autumn period in Chinese history, from between 771 and 403 BC. Judging from the script written on the side of the blade, it belonged to the king of Yue. However, archaeologists aren't exactly sure who that is, seeing as at least nine kings ruled Yue during that period, and the sword could have belonged to any of them. What would you do with such a legendary ancient sword? Would you wear it around or hang it up on the wall? Maybe use it to cut stacks of paper? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Maori Artifacts A strange collection of Maori artifacts has been discovered at an ancient settlement in New Zealand. The discovery came thanks to the construction of a sewer line. Workers were digging on the South Island of New Zealand when they found stone adze fragments and an ancient fireplace. According to archaeologist Kirsty Sykes, the adze stone fragments came from the late 1800s, though the fireplace could be much older. The fireplace was actually found with the remains of shellfish, such as mussels and cockles. Kiersey says that this would have been a perfect spot to sit on the shore, cook up some seafood, and enjoy the view. But the history behind the artifacts is actually a bit disturbing. You see, the Maori moved here in the middle of the 1800s after being kicked out of their principal settlement by the European colonists. They were basically forced out of their home to live on the beaches, which is why so many of their artifacts turn up along the coastline. Number 4. Confiscated Pterosaur Skeletons Back in 2013, the federal police of Brazil were hot on the trail of illegal fossil traders. Fossils in Brazil are technically under the protection of law, seen as part of the geological history of the country. But that hasn't stopped people from collecting fossils and selling them on the black market. Well, the cops actually managed to track down one guy confiscating what turned out to be one of the best preserved pterosaur skeletons in the world. The fossil has preserved just about the entire body of the pterosaur, including pieces of its soft tissue. And if the police hadn't found it, the fossil would have likely ended up being sold and then shipped across the world to some rich guy's personal museum. If you're not sure what a pterosaur is, it was a type of flying reptile monster that lived during the Cretaceous period from between 145 and 100 million years ago. 
This particular pterosaur is a Tupendactylus navigans. Because the fossil confiscated by the police was found to be in such great condition, it was handed over to the University of Sao Paulo. Researchers there were then able to recreate what the creature looked like when it was still alive. This thing wasn't so much a flying reptile as it was a flying giraffe. It was able to walk on all four legs with a wingspan of over eight feet and a giant crest on its head like a rhino horn. It was about 3.3 feet tall with most of its height being attributed to its ridiculously long neck. Because of its odd design, it probably couldn't fly long distances. Number 3. Warrior's Bronze Helmet Archaeologists recently stumbled upon one of the best-preserved Greek warrior helmets ever. The priceless artifact dates back 3,000 years to the 6th century BC. This was a time when Greek city-states were in almost constant conflict with the nearby Persian Empire. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, the helmet represents the Corinthian style of armor, named for the Greek city of Corinth, where the style first took shape. And even though the helmet does have a few cracks and is slightly rusted, it's in pretty amazing condition seeing as it spent about 2,600 years submerged underwater. The helmet still looks so good that you can see the peacock design above the eye slits. So far, this is the only complete Greek warrior helmet that has ever been discovered along the coast of Israel. It was found in Haifa Harbor by a Dutch dredging ship. The owner of the ship accidentally hauled the helmet into his vessel, but was responsible enough to hand it over to the local antiquities authority. Even though we can't say for sure whose head this helmet protected, it's believed that it was worn by a warrior, perhaps even a mercenary. The individual had probably been stationed on a warship in the Mediterranean when he either died in battle or lost his helmet overboard. Number 2. Ancient Seashell Horn In 1931, archaeologists uncovered a rather strange seashell in a French cave. The cave happened to contain prehistoric wall paintings dating back at least 17,000 years. Archaeologists at the time speculated that whoever painted the cave walls had also used the shell as a ceremonial cup for drinking. Fast forward several decades, researchers have now figured out exactly what the mysterious cave shell was used for. It wasn't a drinking glass, it was a musical instrument. Prehistoric people living in France actually managed to create one of the first instruments in the world by modifying the conch shell. They figured out how to produce three separate notes by punching different holes in the shell. All these years later, scientists studying the conch shell handed it over to a local musician to see if they could replicate the sound it made almost 20,000 years ago. It sounded quite interesting, but probably not the way you would expect. Scientists blamed this on the fact that the musician wasn't using it in a cave, where the acoustics would have been more extreme. Either way, the seashell horn is still one of the oldest musical instruments in the archaeological record. It's only predated by flutes made from bird bones and mammoth tusks that date back 40,000 years. Number 1. Spiral of Skeletons Scientists working near Mexico City discovered an ancient burial site from 2,400 years ago. Ancient burial sites aren't that uncommon, but the fact that the skeletons were laid out in a creepy spiral pattern has given this one a prime spot in the news. Researchers have never come across this type of burial practice before, and they believe it was probably part of an unknown ritual. These skeletons were excavated in the small city of Tlalpan, an area famous for elongated skulls caused by cranial deformation. Jimena Rivera, an archaeologist from the University of Mexico, says they believe the ritual may have been some kind of interpretation of life. This is because individuals of all different ages are represented in the death spiral. There is a baby, a child, some young adults or teenagers, some adults, and then some old people. Still, nobody knows why exactly the people were chosen or why they were buried in a spiral about four feet underground. The settlement where these people came from dates back to the pre-classical period of Mexico to around 1000 BC. This was way before the Aztec Empire. It's doubtful that the spiral burial had anything to do with the later rituals of the Aztec. To be honest, researchers are stumped on this one. Even after a significant amount of investigation, they are no closer to solving the mystery of the spiral. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite archaeological discovery from today? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more. See you next time. Bye!